welcome back to part two, all about switches. And we have a guest appearance here, our channel account manager, Mark Carty, who's gonna be explaining kind of like the more technical business stuff that I don't really understand and Alan doesn't really understand, so. Thanks, Soph, speak for yourself. I'm just being honest. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna kick off and we're gonna start talking about something called POE, Power Over Ethernet. First of all, Alan, what is power over, over Ethernet? I can't even say it. P-O-E. P-O-E. P-O-E is uh, for, for the abbreviated stuff. So P-O-E at home, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle the home and then Mark will talk more about the business implications mm. of P-O-E. So basically, in your, in your home structure, as we talked about previously, you, you, you have a switch. And a P-O-E switch will enable you to not only run a gigabit Ethernet connection to your... Um, to your device, it will also allow you to deliver power at the same time. Okay. Through the same cable. When you say power, well. what are you talking about exactly? I mean, it's actually like electricity. Electricity, power, yes. <laughs> I knew that, I knew that. That's fine. I know you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, I get it. So yeah. take for instance an IP camera. You have a home IP camera in, in, in your front room that's watching um, a pet or okay. a, a child. You yeah. can run that via one cable, yeah. which will supply both the internet and the power at the same time. Ah. It's one of the best uses for PoE at home is home cameras. Okay, fantastic. So that's how we use it at home. So how yeah. is it used in business? So in business, PoE switches or power over Ethernet could be used to power th everyday devices that we use in the office. Okay. So we could be used to, to power things like phones, IP phones. Okay. They could be used to power Wi-Fi access points to give um, mass signals or mass uh, amount of users, connectivity okay. to the internet, okay. but they could also be used for simpler things like door access control, um, security cameras, CCTV cameras. Right. There's a whole host of devices that nowadays can be connected mm. to an internet, uh, to a network okay. via a PoE switch. And a PoE, okay. And, and this is an example of a PoE switch, is it? Yes. This is one of our big, one of our so big one smart of our... switches. Yeah. yeah. Talk yeah. about this then. So, so this is the DGS 1100 series. It's one of our smart switches. Okay. And this switch particularly has about 370, 380 watts worth of power. That meaning that we can connect about 24 devices at any one time to a network switch. Right. So that could be 24 CCTV cameras and right. they all feed into a simple unit. Wow. Mm. Well, if That's... you if, if you think about the advantages of using this, the power of camera, yeah. your, your camera doesn't have to be anywhere near a power outlet. Okay. Because you can just run the, the cable from the switch directly into the back of it. So there doesn't oh. need to be a plug anywhere near it. And that's the same advantage for at home you're not restricted yeah. by where your plug sockets are okay. because you can just you run, can lead it. Run, you can, run, you can put run the, the cable. cable. Yeah, it's about simplifying the amount of cables and the amount yeah. of I hate cables. Other inputs that are needed to everyday devices. So if yeah. we can just work, run a simple cable yeah. and it was this being an Ethernet cable yeah. to a device, yeah. we take away things like DC cabling, we take away in CCTV especially, things like coaxial cables which are old fashioned okay. and it's just Makes it making it easier for for people to manage, making it easier good. for people well, like me to plug a device in to get it up and running easily. You've just said that buzzword again, managed. We talked about unmanaged switches before in part one, didn't we, yes. Alan? So talk to me a bit about managed switches so before we get more we start, onto the smart. Start start with smart managed switches. Okay. Um, because there's two different kinds of managed switches. You've got smart managed switches, which are. Um, um, uh, this, this is an example here. And then the next level up is a fully managed switch, which okay. is where things get a little bit more complicated. Yeah, explain as if you're explaining. So in our portfolio, we have three types of switches. Our managed, which are very simple connections or for, for simple connections. Yeah. We have smart switches that are generally a little bit more feature rich. Right. So these things have the ability to do things like quality of service so we can prioritize a, a, a a type of data so we yeah. can prioritize video i love traffic. this i love this we've got this on our routers haven't we yes we can pro uh, prioritize things like voice traffic so if you're running a call center for example and you have a lot of ip connected that's phones, very clever this is just guaranteeing the clarity of signal the clarity of service quality, quality okay services. that's very clever quality that's of service. One i couldn't think of the word yeah, yeah quality of service <laughs> is, is is great because it as mark says um we think of it as a motorway so in the slow lane of the motorway, you connect your least 
uh, least essential devices. Yeah. And in the fast lane, you connect your most essential devices. So as, as, as Mark said, your VoIP phones will be in the fast lane because Remind you- Remind me what a VoIP phone is again. Voice over IP, a, a phone that's connected via the internet. Right, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So that phone, that phone is in the fast lane, okay. which means that it gets priority of signal so that you don't drop those all important packets, which are parts of the voice conversation. Okay. Then, th then in the middle lane, you'd have email or, and stuff like that. So that would go through, but be prioritized behind those live calls because email is less, less urgent. So then, in what scenario would somebody use a managed smart system? So for example, give me an example. A, a so managed can... switch, for example, could okay. be used at home. All okay. right, it's a simple managed. connection connecting a, you, you want to connect a couple of extra devices to a Fine. network. Okay. All right. So imagine working at home. Yeah. You plug a, a, an unmanaged switch, a simple connect, connectivity product like this to yeah. your home router. Okay. And I can use this to connect my PlayStation, my laptop. Awesome. Uh, my games console, my laptop, mm. my, my my uh, my bits and pieces bits towards and bobs, it. Yeah, yeah. When we go up to a smart switch, yeah. this is now designed for a business that has priorities that wants to be able to prioritize certain types of traffic, Fine. wants to be able to do things like VLAN segregating parts of their network. Right, oh, okay. Right. VLAN's very important when it and comes that's, to smart switches. And that's a quality of service thing, generally no, speaking. No, VLAN is security. Separate. VLAN is about security, I was so that's about, about uh, segmenting different data on the same product. All right, so essentially you can dedicate this half of the switch towards the finance, this half of the switch towards HR, yeah. and neither uh, or both halves or the different halves will not be able to see the types of data on. It's about securely. That's brilliant. Uh, yeah. uh, securely segregating the data. Okay, that's fantastic. I didn't even know. You could, I really didn't know you could do that. That's well, in, very clever. In, in in these days of GDPR and, yeah. and all sorts of stuff. Um, I mean, I, as, as the marketing manager, I have an email database and other teams shouldn't be able to access that database. So I can be on a separate VLAN to um, the sales staff and the sales staff can be on a separate VLAN to the HR staff who have all of the delicate records yeah. on all of those people. So it's about, again, we, we, we talked about Wi-Fi security earlier. It's about another way about making your internal data secure so that somebody can't take your entire company details home on a thumb drive and lose it okay uh, so it's um it's it's the v, v, vlans are absolutely great they're one of the biggest feature upgrades that go from um, unmanaged to smart switches ah, I see. then we go on to the third tier or the what we call the manual switch so yeah. these generally are switches that are more capable so okay. the smart switch has select amounts of memory mm -hmm. and a managed switch has small amounts of memory a layer three or a managed switch has more capability so okay. it's designed to be able to handle lots of little packets and lots of little transactions quicker and more efficiently than what a smart switch can do okay a managed switch has other features so mm. they've got things like routing capabilities so we can tell uh, the switches where to directly put that data ah, so it okay. won't put it in any other places in in the network apart from where you demand so you can or where you go it. mm. it's also got the ability to throttle and control the bandwidth that right. you guys are putting through so you can limit ports and the amount of data going through per them port. you can do that per port That's via clever. a managed switch it's just about how you can manage that data and manage your network a lot better using okay. a fully managed product they are a little bit more expensive yeah but they come with a whole host of features that i haven't mentioned just yet but they are an investment for larger organizations larger businesses larger schools what are we talking yeah what are we talking what kind of businesses what kind of establishments well, would probably you, use those bigger it, it, there's yeah. no particular rule on what type of business would need it mm. it's more about the the amount of data that a car uh, that a business or a, a customer is putting through their network yeah. and it's about the capabilities that they need so it's yeah. about the yeah. feature set they need okay. and it's, so there it's isn't... also sorry it's, it's it's also about the capabilities of the business because if you've got a fully managed switch you need somebody in the business who understands i was going to say managed switches. Yeah, so to if manage you, it if, if you yeah. don't have a dedicated it person within your team you're probably better off sticking with smart switches no matter what your could you not teach could you not needs. learn you could learn it it's uh, it's 
it, it, takes a bit more time to learn. Takes yeah. a little bit more time to learn. Yeah. Our, our products do have, you know, GUIs and they're designed to be graphical and, uh, yeah. and fairly intuitive. Okay. But you wouldn't, for example, need uh, one of our managed switches at home. It might be a bit OTT. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These things are designed sure. for larger networks. So okay. They're designed to handle and process data more efficiently. Um, than some of our smart and our managed products. Yes. But a smart a, a smart switch could be of use at home if you have a home office. Yeah. Because then you could submit segment your home network to keep your oh, completely uh, work data away yeah. from your your home data, keep your children out of out of your home data. So that's why smart switches are on the grow at home. So this being a twenty six port big switch these come in five and eight port variants as well oh, right. so if you want that extra ability the the dgs 1100 series has five eight and ten port options um, which are probably more suited to home use mm. but we'll still have those um those parts in it that allow the switches to be um to have a, a vlan set up on it so how do you go about managing this range the range of switches that we offer so within dealing smart range or for dealing smart switches we have something called nucleus connect that mm. can help you manage these uh th these products uh, currently it manages the dgs 1100 and dgs 1210 series of smart switches as well as the uh, the 10 gigabit varieties we do essentially it's a free to download piece of software that you can install on the server or on a PC. And this is used to, 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 to configure en masse all the different switches that we have on the range. You right. can do things like set PoE scheduling, you can look at VLAN scheduling, and it's just designed to it's, make a network administrator's job easy to kind of like the large app, groups of products. Like having is, an app, uh, but like the business level of it. There well, is a Nucleus a Connect app the, the, as, as oh, well. Nucleus well, Connect it does it, have an app, yeah. Nucleus Connect is also available on, on an app which you can download from either the Google Play or the Apple Store. And it's obviously not going to be as detailed as the, the downloadable stuff that you would put on your PC. But what it does do is it allows you to access your network from anywhere. So if your IT manager is on holiday, if he's on the beach in Barbados, he still has access to the app via his mobile phone yeah. or his iPad, whichever he has it Handy. stored on. Yeah, it's just to give you an... Uh, uh, uh ultimately an insight of what's going on within your infrastructure at any one time. So okay. you can th set things like PoE schedules, you can mm. turn off devices, you can turn off ports on some of the switches, yeah. you can restrict or add uh, access if needs be. It's just to give that flexibility on route around how you want to manage So you that, need that Nucleus place. Connect on those products, those three it's products It's advisable that you download it because yeah. with yeah. anything, with any system on there, it's around how you manage and how you want to maintain that product. Okay. The switches that will work without Nucleus Connect because okay. they've all got their own graphical interface, but if okay. you're managing multiple sites or multiple locations, okay. or yeah. if you want to be in touch with what's going on 24 hours a day with what's going on within your business, you can quite, quite, quite quickly log onto an app view the data or view yeah. the information and yeah. decide to make the changes that you need for your business. That sounds interesting. Yeah, and will it, for will troubleshooting. It, yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, will it give you kind of like pointers if something's not going right and then you can be like, you can tweak it a little bit as Correct, you go, yes. which is quite handy, isn't it? Because, you know, you see things that you don't normally see. Okay, great. One thing I think we have to talk about is stacking. I do not understand what this is. What is stacking? So on some of our smart managed and fully managed switches, we have an, a, a feature called stacking. Mm -hmm. And what this is, is the ability to manage a, a multiple switches within the range. So take a, a 24 port PoE switch, for example, okay. and you manage these devices as a single unit. So you can get five or six of these products together and put them in a physical stack. Okay. And what this means is it just gives an IT manager or a, 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 somebody that's managing the devices an easier way to, to manage multiple devices. Because they're all together yes. yeah. and it's helpful. Okay, this is good. Gives you gives you a lot of flexibility um, with regards to redundancy. Yep. Um, okay. Allows you to take advantage of link aggregation and, and a lot of the other stuff that our business customers would truly, truly benefit from. Mm. Uh, and I think if, if, if any business customers out there want to know more about spanning through protocols, redundancies and that kind of stuff, uh, talk to us. Um, just give us uh, just give us a call or give us a bell and we'll we're, we're happy to go into more detail 
about what that means and, and how it can help out your business. So. I think the key thing here is that we've now kind of really explained what all these different switches do. And I think that actually I would very much go out and buy a switch now and just stick it in my house because it sounds like it works better than what I've already got. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really understand what it was before. So um, if you are interested in getting yourself a switch, get in touch. Yeah. Alan, is there anything else to add? Um, yeah, like, like and subscribe the video as, yeah. as, as, as always. Um, as I said, if you do want any more information, um, we, we have a couple of ways to contact us. We, we have a live chat on our website, so you can just go to dlink.com. Uh, make sure you're in the UK team. There's a little Union Jack in the top right corner to make sure that you're in the, um, in the UK website. And you'll see one of our friendly faces, me, Mark, or one of our other salespeople pop up and you can chat with us live about any sort of advice around switches. Uh, on that or you can email us at uki-sales at dlink.com uh, we're always available and, and we're always here to help um, if not leave any comments on youtube underneath the video and we'll come back to you as soon as we can and follow us on instagram okay great thank you bye, bye.